Hey guys, Andy here. So, I've not had a OnePlus device since the OnePlus 2 back in, I think it's almost almost this, you know, this month in 2015. Um, I had a few issues with the OnePlus 2, if I remember, I think I found, well, the OnePlus 1 I had in December 2014, I loved, I thought it was a fantastic phone. I think I gave it like my phone of the year for 2014. Um, if I'm honest, mainly because it was £270 and it, it could compete with the big boys, which at the time cost about £600, I think. But it really was quite impressive. Then the OnePlus 2 came along and I just wasn't as impressed. It was still a very good device. I think the price had gone up. I can't remember to what, if I'm honest now. And I had some problems with the fingerprint sensor and I remember getting a lot of stick for that because every time, no, mine works fantastic and mine just wasn't very reliable. And that was quite annoying. Um, so now I wind on three more years and I thought, you know, I need to give it another go. Everybody talks about the OnePlus 6 and how it's the it's just the, such an amazing phone. And then the 6T has just come out um, with a few tweaks to it. It's still very much the same phone, but with um, in-screen fingerprint sensor, no 3.5mm jack, tiny little notch at the top, um, but much the same as the 6. I think it might have a slightly bigger battery. I forget now, actually. So I thought... Maybe maybe now's the time I give them a go. Um, so I bought mine. I actually bought mine from John Lewis and Partners for four ninety nine. I thought it's quite a good idea because I'm thinking it's a kind of a phone I'll hang on to because it, in theory, should be the best in that price range around the five hundred pound mark. So not budget, but not top end, that mid range. So it'd be a good one to keep to sort of when there's challenges that come along, put them up against the One Plus Six T. And John Lewis and Partners obviously have two year warranty, which I figure actually that's quite valuable on a phone. So that's where I bought mine. I've been using it for, well, six days, almost a week now, um, so I thought I'd give you my thoughts on it. We'll start with the design. So it's got a glass front and a glass back. The glass back, you cannot see so much because I've put this Extreme Skin skin on it, which I really do like. Another quick plug for Extreme Skin, just because I'm actually so pleased with this install. It's the best install I've done of a skin, I think, ever. Um, I just think it looks great. I kind of, it makes me think, well, why don't OnePlus do a white and red? Because those are the kind of OnePlus colours. I just think it looks so good. I'm so pleased with it. It looks so, it makes such a big difference to the device. It's so nice. Um, but yeah, so it, it is very, it is quite slippy. You do get. I should show you this camera already. You do get a uh, case in the box with the device, which you probably want to use if nothing else, just because it gives you a better grip um, of the device. I'm not a massive case fan, that's why I've gone with the skin instead. Uh, the skin is only about, what, nine pounds from Extreme Skin, so have a look at that if you're interested. Um, it's 185 grams, which is kind of normal for a device of this sort of size. It feels quite good in the hand, actually, especially with the skin on, uh, where it's not quite so slippy. Um, it comes in three different colors, Thunder Purple, Mirror Black, and Midnight Black. This was mirror black, as I say. You have to watch the unboxing if you want to see how it actually looked before I put the skin on it, I suppose. But it was basically was a, a glassy, shiny black. If we talk about the hardware, it's got the Snapdragon 845, which is obviously the 10 nanometer. So a lot of some people say that's an old chipset. It's the newest one Snapdragon do. 845. It's got an octa-core CPU. It's got the Adreno 630 GPU. It's got six gig of RAM. But you can. It's got 128 gig of storage. But you can, um, for like £30 more, you can get 8 gig more RAM. Uh, there is an option to go to 256 gig of storage. I think that was about 100 more. Sorry, I should have checked. I think it's about uh, 100 more. It Geekbench is at 8,984. That's my average, or as as, um, as I've got on my tests, which is, which is pretty good. That's around the Note 9 level. It's not quite up there with the Huawei Mate 20 Pro, but it beats the Pixel 3 XL uh, for £500. That's pretty good. Um, I mean, I guess it's in there, you know, you can get cheap phones that will benchmark like that, like the Pocophone F1. I have done a test of this phone against the Pocophone. So it's not all about price to get the to get the high benchmarks, but it's pretty solid. Um, the haptic feedback's a little weird one. So I realized why the Pixel 3 XL, everyone commented how great the haptic feedback was. And I, I went from the 3 XL to this, and I think that made me realize what makes the 3 XL's haptic feedback so good. This feels like it vibrates when it gives you the haptic feedback. Even if it's only for a, like a split second, it feels like it vibrates. Whereas the 3XL feels like a knock. And I think that's the difference. So on this one, I turn off the haptic feedback. I didn't particularly like it. It was like a little vibration. Um, other, other sort of points, there's a, a switch on the side which lets us change to vibrate, to, or 
can't see that because of the reflection. Silent to vibrate to ring. I really like this switch. I don't need the switch. <laughs> I don't. I generally just leave my phone in vibrate, and I probably shouldn't. When I get home, I probably should switch it on to ring so that if I do get a message, then I can hear it. But maybe it's just because for so long I've just left it in vibrate. I kind of I just forget to even think about that. So I like it. I just don't use it. I, the, I'm sure there'll be people out there that do like it. Um, USB Type C. It looks like dual stereo speakers, but it's not. It's just one speaker. The speaker is very loud, though. Where did I put the notes on that one? Maybe I didn't. Um, it basically, it broke records <laughs> when I do my. I've got a little sound meter. I set it up, and it's about seven centimeters away from the speaker. I've got three different clips of music. One being like some old intro music I had. One being actual music, and one being a podcast. And I get the the, the highest decibel meter reading from each one of those, and then I get an average, and that's the score. And basically, the one plus six T beat everything. I mean, it just smashed them, um, as you'll be able to see by the little graphic that I've got up here. So, you do notice them not being stereo speakers when you're sort of watching YouTube videos. You can, you know, it does sound a little bit weird coming out of the one side. I don't watch a lot of YouTube using the speakers. If I'm watching YouTube, I'm normally at the gym. I've got headphones in. Doesn't really matter. If I'm on the phone talking to somebody, which is one of the ways I use the, the, the speaker. It's just sat on my desk. It doesn't really matter if it's firing up or out of stereo, if it's just firing out the bottom with a very loud speaker. Um, likewise, if you want to listen to podcasts, I'm not really, I don't need stereo sound for those. I just want it loud enough that I can hear over the kettle. And this, I almost couldn't hear the kettle. <laughs> it, was, it is a really strong uh, speaker. I, I'm really quite pleased with the speaker on it. Let's just give you a quick demo, in fact, of the speaker. Let's take a break and thank the sponsor, who is Curiosity Stream, the world's first streaming service. You're going to find an app everywhere Amazon, Kindle, Apple TV. So to me, that is very loud. Really quite impressive. The screen is a 6.41 uh, optic AMOLED with 85.6% coverage that's just because there are very thin bezels all around it the notch is to me is bearable it's that small you don't really mind it i don't think it is only a 1080p screen so it's 2340 by 1080 that's a 19.5 to 9 ratio with about 402 pixels per inch some people get really upset oh it's only 1080p personally i think that's fine i really don't think you can tell that much difference i mean maybe it's just my old eyes but I did do a test, um, 540p versus 1080p on Netflix. I couldn't really see the difference. They're, they both look very good. So to me, 1080p is fine. It helps with the battery. I've got no issues. I'm more than happy buying even top-end phones with 1080p screens. That's not a problem for me. Um, it's covered with Corning Gorilla Glass 6. It does also come with a pre-installed screen protector. Now, I've took it off this evening. And annoyingly, I put it down on some paper, so it stuck all the paper to it. But, I mean, that is the thinnest screen protector ever. I just wouldn't bother with it. The screen feels a lot better without it. Um, if you really want the protection, I would take off the pre-installed one and just buy a decent one. I mean, generally, tempered glass are going to be your best route to go anyway. But, yeah, that is just so thin oh i can't believe when i took it off. i mean it felt thin when it was on but when i took it off my realized actually how thin it was it's almost like a sheet of paper but in plastic so to speak not good um the screen is very bright it gets up to uh 723 lumens in my test which is very good one of the brightest screens i've tested in quite some time to be honest uh, I think it's nice and you know the colors pop really well. You do get different color modes when you're setting up sRGB, I can't remember what they're called, vibrant, natural, I don't know, whatever those different options you can try or one that you can kind of customize. So you can have it set up, in, I, I can't remember which I went with actually, but you can have it set up however you want, so that's quite good. Also with the screen is the in-screen fingerprint sensor. This is where I have a problem with this device. Much like the OnePlus 2, I have seem to have massive problems with this and I don't know I don't know if it's my fingers. I don't know. Right, so let me let's let's try it. So, one thing is it does have really good facial recognition. So you set that up when you're setting the device up, and it's actually very quick. I'm going to try and show you. So we're locked. Look, I'm going to press the power. That's really quick. It is really quick. 
so the fingerprint sensor, I only really need it when I'm authorizing LastPass or something like that. Um, because turning on, you can just look at it. I mean, I suppose there's times when I've got my helmet on, I need to use the fingerprint sensor. And for me, it's terrible. So we've lit the screen up. That's the other thing. It won't work from screen off. I can't just press, well, I mean, it did, because when you, when you tap it, you wake the screen. So if we turn it back off, tap it, you wake the screen, failed, worked. So one and two, that's not too bad. Not recognized. And trying different areas. There we go. Strangely, even though when I set it up, I mean, I did wonder about sh literally showing you in this video, setting the fingerprint up and then showing you kind of how bad it is for me. And I thought, it's a waste of time. Hopefully you guys trust me. If you're regular viewers, you'll know that I'm generally quite honest about these things. And I'm not trying to bash on this phone because I actually really like it. There were times I was thinking, you know, I could use this as my daily. I could keep this as my daily and sell the more expensive phones. This is that good. But the fingerprint sensor, not recognized. And again, I moved it slightly further forward. Now, most of the setup was around this part of the finger. So only when you get to the edges that I kind of came around, but down here seems to be the bit that works better. I don't get it. So I went, see, I went for the lower bit. If I go for the bit that I actually think is the bit I've spent more time registering, it doesn't work. Again, I'm going for the lower bit. Oh, there we go. Now, I've registered my th this thumb as well. Oops, I wasn't even meaning to. So that failed. Not recognized. Worked. I mean, I don't know, maybe someone's keeping count of the success rate, but it's about, what, 40% of the minute? And there's been times it just won't unlock. Last night, so I was in a... The room was dark, I was basically going to bed and I was trying to just unlock to do something. The face detection wouldn't work in the dark and I couldn't, you do about five times, then just arrive, right, you've had it, you need to put the password in. Oh, like some kind of freaking Neanderthal man without a fingerprint sensor on his phone. Um, I did, and then again, I did, oh, I need to do something. And, oh, sake, and it just would not, and like different parts of the finger. And this was just with one thumb. Cause that's, someone else said to me, or I read on a forum, oh, I think there's problems when you, you, when you set up more than one finger. Really? Maybe there is, maybe OnePlus, and this is just a bit of a theory I have, maybe they didn't want to pay for a license of somebody that's got an algorithm and they wanted to do their own. And maybe it struggles with multiple fingers. On the OnePlus 2, definitely I'd have set up both thumbs on both fingers, why wouldn't I? One for when you're holding, one for when it's on a desk, and both sides of your body. But it seems to apparently struggle with that, which seems bizarre to me. Um, Conversely, and I want to, because I know people are going to want to, with the OnePlus 2, I got a lot of stick for this. Loads of other people are having no problems at all. No, They say it's fantastic, 99% of the time it works great. I don't, I mean, some people are saying, yeah, I've got a different finger set up, works fine. So maybe it's me. Maybe it's even the device. Maybe I've got a faulty device. I don't know. I don't want to lie to you. I want to say, yeah, everything's great, because everyone else seems to be having no problems. I can only show you what I'm doing and what I'm getting and, and how it's working. And I don't want to go on about it because that's 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 my one problem with it. Everything else, as I'm talking about, is is quite impressive. So let's leave it at that and let's move on. And please don't shout at me in the comments. I'm just telling you what I've experienced. So we're going to talk about the cameras or the lenses, I should say. Uh, 16 megapixel, 20 megapixel with 16 megapixel effective. I'm not actually sure what that bit means. Maybe it means it only uses 16 megapixels because the other, maybe the other megapixels or the other pixels, excuse me are used to work the electronic IBIS stabilization. I don't know. If you know, please let me know in the comments down below. Um, F1.7 is pretty good. The front facing camera is uh, 16 megapixel as well with F2.0. The rear camera <coughs> can do 4K at 60 frames per second. I've done a video with some sample footage, so have a look at that if you want to see the 4K footage. Um, generally, uh, the pictures I think are quite good. So the cameras are listed as, or sort of talked about as the weaker point of the device. So I wasn't really sure what to expect, but actually I thought they were pretty good. I thought the colors were quite vibrant. I thought the detail was reasonable. Um, it was, obviously it struggles a little bit in lower light uh, when the conditions get a bit harder, but actually the night photos, the night mode, they worked okay. I mean, it's, they're not, don't match the pixel phones or anything like that, but it's okay, it's reasonable. Um, the actual, let's see if we can, there we go. Uh, 
third time lucky. So the actual app is reasonably stock. You've got a little uh, Google Lens button there, which I quite like. Let's you detect all various different bits and pieces. It's a little weird. You can't you can't scroll this bar here. So if I want to go from night down to, I can't just. Shoom, I can scroll there. It just seems odd to me that you can't scroll there. I don't really know why. <laughs> but there we go. But yeah, I like the app. It's it's reasonably sort of stock. It's fairly simple. You can change ratios and things like that up here. But but not a lot, you know there's a lot of, not a lot of options. Um, but it's a fairly sort of standard app. So yeah, I was actually quite surprised by the cameras. They, they really wouldn't be a concern to me. If you want a phone with a good camera, you wouldn't pick this, but it's not a bad camera. You wouldn't have people laughing at the pictures you take because they're so bad. Um, so yeah, the camera's okay. Then we move on to the software. And I think possibly um, one of the phone's real strengths is it's really quite stock. So we're on Android Pi 9.0. Uh, it is using Oxygen OS, which is their own version of of Android. But I've stuck at the minute. I've got Nova Launcher on here, which means we're we're really gone to to sort of stock looking. If we quickly change uh, default apps, home app. Let's just go with the OnePlus Launcher. So it's still quite stock. You get hidden apps, I call it actually, hidden apps at the side. So it's still reasonably looking stock. You get whatever, I'm not entirely sure if I like this bit over on here. I'd rather Google now. But it's pretty, I mean, the only, the folders don't look, they don't look particularly Googly, if that makes sense. But it's nice and slick. Um, you know, it's not a, it's not, oh, I've lost the, Let's go back and let's I'll put it back to Nova if you don't mind though. There we go. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very much kind of stock looking. We also get some very good options though. So the settings, nice and clean. You get to change the accent color. I've, I've gone for red so it matches my, my white and red background, which I think looks quite cool. Um, oh, right. Let me show you a couple of different bits. What do we want to start with? So the notch, let's go to the notch notch display so we get two different modes we've got the regular notch as it is and we've got the hidden notch like so as you can see they've done hiding the notch the right way now I don't actually mind this notch because it is so small it doesn't really impede things but you've got the option of doing it whichever way you want um, what else is the icon manager this is really handy so we go into icon manager and basically we get to say which of the icons we want to show up at the top. So for example, NFC. Boom, the NFC icon appears. But I don't, well, I don't need that, it's always on, it's fine. You can turn off Bluetooth, you can turn off the Wi-Fi icon, you can turn off the data icon, pretty much anything you want really. The only thing I don't think I could see was the clock, which is a little weird. I don't know why I won't be able to turn the clock off. But yeah, really like that you can do that because the Huawei, for example, you can't, and it's, it's the notification bar's full of icons. I can't see any of my notifications. Um, what else have not done? Oh yeah, Google Assistant, quick assistive app. Hold the power button for half a second. So I'm gonna... And there's Google Assistant, which I think... Hi, Hello. Yes, you are my Google Assistant. Uh, and then the gestures. And I want the navigation gestures, there we go. So again, I love that we get the options. We can turn on the buttons down the bottom. We can have the Google um, navigation system, or we can go to a full on, well, iOS, if I'm honest, navigation gestures, which is really pretty. And it works on um, a third party launcher, unlike the Huawei. Swiping up is going back though, which is a little bit different to swiping in from the sides, but you can do it from either Either side, we're going to an app, we swipe it from the side, and that's back. So, I, I actually love the gestures, I love the software. It's kind of like this device makes me think if you were a Nexus fan and you're one of those that go, Oh, the pixels they're too expensive, they're not really worth the money. Why do they leave Nexus? You probably should be looking at the OnePlus because it is pretty much stock, you know, the, the stock keyboard, the stock setting, you know, there's. So much of it is stock. 
um, that it is almost like a Nexus device. It's priced in that sort of price bracket, but actually it's really good hard, probably better hard, mm, I almost said better hardware than the Nexus devices. Some of them actually were really good hardware. Uh, but yeah, it just I just really like the software. Did I miss any? Oh, you can change the animation around the fingerprint sensor if you really wanted to, just to like a different. Um, there's a gaming mode if you're a bit of a gamer. It will when it detects a game being played, it kind of cranks up the power and that kind of thing, which could be handy to you. Um, and I didn't mention so. Although we've not got an always on display, we have got either lift to wake or tap to wake. I always thought the always on display or not having one was going to be a bit of a deal breaker, but actually the lift awake and tap to wake, they both work really well, that if I do want to have a quick look and see, I've got no notifications, what the time is, they, it's so easy to do, it's not as big an issue as I thought it would be. So the software, a really big positive. Then if we mention the battery life, so it's got a 3700 milliamp hour LiPo non-removable battery. Um, it easily goes 24 hours, so I mean, let's have a look right now. Again, second attempt to get in, thank you. So we're down at 50%. I came off charge at about 6 o'clock this morning. So yeah, 12 hours ago. So I mean, technically, literally, and I think it even tells us somewhere, should last until about 6.30, which is about the time I actually came off charge. Obviously, as it goes through the night, it would shut things down anyway, and it probably last a bit longer. It would probably make it to 10 or 11 in the morning. In the test that I do though, it's only an hour long test, but I do, um, I play a 37 minute video that I've got. Again, it's standard for every device. I set the screen brightness to 300 lumens, play the video, and then I've basically got a um, auto refresh page that will just keep loading Twitter, basically, until it gets to the hour. It literally ticked from 94% to 93% on the exact second, an hour later, that the test has started which I thought was kind of crazy. So I actually scored it 93.5% rather than 93 because I couldn't decide we should have scored 94 because technically that second was the start of the next hour. Should I score it 93 because that's what it got to, that's what it's used. I thought I'm going to go with 93 and a half, which I then thought actually I should probably do that for the Note 9 because the Note 9 missed by seven, literally seven seconds it ticked into the 93. Um, so I decided to give that a 90, well, I think I gave that like a 93.49. So it rounds up to five, but it's just, just behind the, <laughs> the OnePlus 6T. So yeah, really good battery, really, really strong battery. Um, it's also got fast charging. It used to be called Dash Charge, but I think they lost the trademark on that or something weird like that. So they, they're not allowed to call it Dash Charge, but it charges at four amps, which is pretty nutty, really. When you think about when we started with charging, it was like half an amp. Is USB originally half an amp from like your computer or something? Then we went up to an amp. Then, I don't know, was it Quick Charge? Quick Charge 2 was 2 amps, I'm not sure. Then we went up to 3 amps, I know definitely. Uh, and this is 4 amps, so it is pretty quick at charging. Your charge has been less than 2 hours from flat, um, almost definitely. Although it's not quite as fast as the Huawei, which uses like a 40 watt brick, um, and that charge is crazy fast. But this is still faster than most other devices out there. A lot of people name it as one of the things that they love about, the about OnePlus. So my conclusion is, the device is actually missing a lot. So people talk about the OnePlus 6T as being like the flagship killer. I think they even name themselves the flagship killer and never settle. Um, but actually, it's not got a memory card slot. It's not got a 3.5 mil jack. It's not got a QHD screen. It's not got a notif notification light. It's not got an always on display. Um, it's not got an IP rating. It's not got wireless charging. It's not got stereo speakers. I think I've done everything. That's like eight things I've listed there. It's not got a lot of stuff. Most of it doesn't particularly matter. So let's go through it. No memory card slot, okay, but the device is quite cheap. You can afford the 256 model for way less than you pay for some of the bigger devices. 3.5 mil jack, some people will really miss that. If that's the case, get the OnePlus 6, I guess. Doesn't bother me. QHD screen, I've already mentioned, really not bothered. 1080p is fine. No notification LED and no always on display, as I said. I thought it'd be that would be the deal breaker, but actually it's okay. I just tap the screen, it lights up. I'm kind of all right with that actually. Uh, no IP rating is interesting. People say they think OnePlus just didn't want to pay the license to have it IP tested or certified or whatever. There are videos out there. A guy's left it in a jug of water for half an hour. Seems to work fine still. Wireless charging, yeah, I do quite like it. 
it's not a deal breaker, I don't think. And as I say, the stereo speaker, the speaker, the sole speaker is actually really good, I think. Um, so as I just said, though, it's 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 a really stock Android experience, which means it's slick, it's smooth. I mean, some people will tell you it's slicker and smoother than Pixel devices. I can't argue against that. It, it is really slick and smooth. So to me, that's a definite plus. I don't know how that much that matters to some people that it's stock Android, but I think it's a big plus. Um, it is fantastic hardware. For the money that you pay, you get a great screen, you get a great speaker, you get a great feeling device. Um, it, it generally is really very good. The camera is definitely adequate. I mean, again, that's quoted as being its big weakness, but I think it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I won't go higher than that, but it's pretty good. Um, but for me, the fingerprint sensor is the big problem. And I must stress, apparently most people don't have a problem. I have seen, you know, I've done a bit of Googling. There are other people that say they're really having problems. So I guess my suggestion would be, if you've been thinking about whether to buy this device, I would say go for it, but get it from a reputable store where you trust their warranty. Or order online where you're going to have, you're going to be covered by the, the Distant Selling Act, which gives you like 14 days anyway. And if you have the problems that I have with the fingerprint sensor, you can make that decision. I mean, you might decide face unlock is so quick and easy that you're really not that bothered. Um, but if it bothers you, just just return it um, and get your refund. I suppose I'm saying don't let that. So it, it puts me off because I'm having a lot of problems. But this wasn't, well, it could have been my main device. It wasn't likely going to be my main device. And I think the fingerprint sensor would be one of the big barriers for me. But again, other people are saying it's amazing, it's fast, it's 99% accurate. So as I say, just buy it from somewhere that you trust that you can take it back if you do have problems, um, and you're probably okay. Judge for yourself is what I'm saying, I suppose. If you're thinking, if everything else everything else ticks the boxes for you, go for it, and if you really have problems with the fingerprint sensor and, and it's that big an issue, just, just send it back. Um, so there we go. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'd love to hear them, especially, I mean, again, don't flame me about the fingerprint sensor. I've shown you. It's not, I'm not making things up. I'm not trying to bash the phone. I really like the phone, so don't, please don't bash me for it. Um, but let me know how you, you know, if, if you have no problems at all, I'm more thinking about other people that watch the video, have a look in the comments, because you'll you'll get a flavor of if, the, if generally the fingerprint sensor is okay or if it's generally not. So there we go. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But for now, my name's Andy. I'll catch you all again soon. Well done and thank you for making it to the end of the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, you might want to click the little fellow that should hopefully appear about here to subscribe. Um, you may also want to check out some of my other videos which are going to appear somewhere there. Um, also come have a look at my website, androidandy.uk. Um, there is also a forum. Come and say hello on the forum if you've got any questions about things or requests me to review things or anything else. Just come and have a chat on the forum.